Jeremiah chapter 44. The word that came to Jer Jeremiah concerning all the Jews which dwelt in the land of Egypt. Okay, they left. They're in Egypt. What God told them not to do. That seems to be the main frame of the children of Israel. They keep rebelling against God. And that's the main frame of Christians. We keep rebelling against God. And one day God's going to forgive the iniquities and sins of Jews. He's going to give them a new heart. And they'll never sin again. One day we'll get a brand new body without sin. And we'll never sin again. Which dwelt in Megdal, Jamatasis, at Nah, in the country of Pathro, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. That's what we're talking about, Israel. The God of hosts is everybody. That's his entire creation. So this warning goes out to Jews primarily. Secondary goes out to the world. And it goes out to the fallen angels. Because they're God's hosts. He has seen all the evil that I brought upon Jerusalem. Jerusalem has been sacked, it's been destroyed, the temple's gone. It's old news. Upon all the cities of Judah, everything that the Chaldeans and the Babylonian army, destruction. And behold, this day they are desolation, and no man dwells therein. Because the wickedness which they have committed to provoke me to anger, why Jerusalem was sacked, why Judah has been judged, why Babylon's come, because of the sins and the wickedness. And that they went to burn incense to serve other gods whom they knew not. You imagine serving a God they don't know. Doesn't that sound lucrative? Does that sound stupid? What God are you serving? I don't know. And people who know who know me, like, all right, here he comes. He's going to say something. How many Christians celebrate Easter and don't know who Esther is? How many people celebrate Christmas and don't realize who Tammuz is? How many Christians celebrate Halloween and don't know what the holiday is given for? And what the food is for the dead. So when we read that they have gods they don't know. That's the church too. Some of their gods are their pastor and they don't even know who their pastor really is. And they don't want to know. Neither they nor their father. And you can look into the church history. There are things that were never, ever spoken about in church history that are in and have been in the Laodicean church age. You know, the King James Bible and the Puritans, you realize the Puritans has, has gone as far as back as uh, coming to America. It was against the law to celebrate Christmas. How be it, I sent unto you all my servants the prophets. Jeremiah, Isaiah. Rising early and sending them. Before he's going to judge them. Telling them what they must do to be right. As God sends forth preachers going out preaching the gospel. Before the axe falls. Oh, do not this abominable thing that I hate. God hates the burning of the incense to other gods serving other gods. 
God hates that. But they hearken not. They did not listen like Christians today. Nor incline their ear to turn from the wickedness like Christians and churches today. Where I have been asked to leave churches because they want to stay in their wickedness and they don't want to be <coughs> preached to about what's right and correct. To burn incense, no incense, unto other gods. And we read that in Jeremiah. Wherefore my fury and my anger was poured forth and was kindled in the cities of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem. They are waste and desolate at this day. That's what happens because of sin. Judgment. That's what's going on in the world today. The judgment of God. And we're to preach the gospel. Therefore now thus saith the Lord God of hosts, the God of Israel. Wherefore commit ye this great evil against your soul. To cut off from you man and women, no other sexes, male or female. Child is suckling. There are children on the breast of their mother involved in this sin. Out of Judah, to leave you none to remain. In that ye provoke me with wrath, unto wrath with the works of your hands. Burning incense unto other gods in the land of Egypt. So they haven't got right in Egypt. They're doing the same thing they were doing in the land, in the land of Israel. They're doing in Egypt now. Whether you be gone to dwell, that you might cut yourself off. That means when you die, you're going to hell. Old Testament. And that you might be a curse. And a reproach among all the nations of the earth. You know, if a Christian commits the abominable acts we're reading about now, he's not cursed and he's not cut off. But he loses rewards. And he's not a reproach among the nations. Today, the church said, All are welcome. Come on in, Gentiles, and bring whatever you got, we'll allow it. Have ye forgotten the wickedness of your fathers? The wickedness of the kings of Judah? The wickedness of your wives? And your own wickedness? And the wickedness of your wives? Ooh, God threw that in there twice. Verily, verily. Which they have committed in the land of Judah. And the streets of Jerusalem. Which That's why I destroyed Judah. That's why I destroyed Jerusalem. Because of your sin. Exactly what Isaiah preached. Exactly what Jeremiah preached. And it has happened. They are not humbled even unto this day. Neither have they feared. Nor walked in my law, Jewish. Nor my statutes, Jewish. That I set before you and before your fathers. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will set my face against you for evil. You're in trouble. And cut off all Judah. I will take the remnant of Judah, which are now in Egypt. And have set their face to go into the land of Egypt. Which God told them not to. Jeremiah, you speak to us. Whatever God says, we'll do. And they didn't. So sojourn there. That's a temporary dwelling. It's a it's a motel, hotel stay. And God says, it's not going to be sojourning. You're going to die there. You're not coming back to Judah. 
you're not coming back in the land. They shall all be consumed and fall in the land of Egypt. And they shall even be consumed by sword and by famine. They shall die. From the least, even unto the greatest. By the sword, by the famine. This is the same thing that Jeremiah was saying to the entire nation of Judah and Jerusalem. Now that Jerusalem and Judah has fallen to the words of God, to the words of Jeremiah, they still don't believe it. They've still turned on God. They shall be an excoration and an astonishment, a curse and a reproach. For I will, God speaking, Punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt. As I have punished Jerusalem. Now notice God. When God said Jeremiah the first time. Return. Repent. Get right. Turn from your evil way. There is no repentance. There is no getting right. God says you're finished. And Jeremiah you tell them they're finished. And there is no calling them to get right with God. It's gone. Because what happens to them in Egypt happened in Jerusalem, happened in Judah. They saw it, they witnessed it, they lived it, and they still reject God. I will punish them that dwell in the land of Egypt as I may punish Jerusalem. By the sword, we read that. Famine and pestilence, we read all that. But there's no call to repentance. So that none of the red men of Judah, none, which are going into the land of Egypt to sojourn there temporarily, shall escape or remain. Now the people we're talking about, they escaped and remained of the Babylonian army. And God told Jeremiah to tell him, stay in the land. And I'll take care of you. And they disobeyed the word of God as their fathers disobeyed. And God says, listen, you saw the judgment. You're done. As much as those people saw all the wonders, all the promises, all the great things that God done to them, and when, when they sent the spies into Kadesh Barnea, and they came back with the evil report, and they did not want to do it, God said, you're done, that's it, you've seen it. You're finished. To which they have a desire to return to dwell there in the land, but none shall return, but such as shall escape. To all the men which knew their wives. Alright men, if you know your wife is doing something, saved or lost, you're going to give an account to your wife. It's called a betting. To be acknowledged too. When Jezebel murdered Naboth, later on Elijah came to Ahab and said, Murderer. Ahab didn't kill anybody, but Jezebel did. And Jezebel was Ahab's wife. Do husbands know in Baptist churches? I doubt it. That they're going to be held accountable to what their wives do. That there's a whole chapter, I believe it's Leviticus. That if a woman makes a vow, her father or her husband can disallow that vow. And if they don't, well, it stands. And yet the father or the husband will be charged. With the wives which had burned incense unto other gods. And all the women that stood by. 
to watch and listen and a great multitude. <laughs> you know all the women that are in the Baptist churches and have sinned against God? A great multitude. And their husbands don't care. They don't want to acknowledge it. But they will. Even all the people that dwell in the land of Egypt in Pathos answered Jeremiah saying, Alright, here's the answer. As for the word, which would be the word of God, that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord Jehovah, I am, we will not hearken unto thee. You say, wow, isn't that? That wouldn't happen today. I've had a pastor of a church rebuke me for preaching and teaching the truth about Easter and about Christmas, and I don't care what you say, brother, but those are the church, two church ordinances of the year. Those are the two times that people come to church and put money in the play. <laughs> I had a pastor from Florida, Volusia County, 2020, get upset with me because I preached against, and the congregation heard, did not like my preaching against Christmas and Easter. I don't care what you say. I don't care what documented facts you have. I don't care what your footnotes are. I don't care what credits you give. You're wrong. And I would have you please don't mention it to my people. That's not a kind of an anchor to have. Maybe you'll drown in the Jordan River. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goes for by our mouth. That's what I just told you. 2020. Maybe, yeah, 2000, that was 2020. There was another issue in 2021, but... Alright. We're going to do whatever we want to do. That's the lie to see in church age. We don't care God said, you're poor, miserable, wretched, and naked. No, we're rich, we're great, and we're wonderful. That's not what God said. I don't care what God says. To pour out drink offerings. That was an offering of God, you know. The first drink offering you read about in the, in the Bible is Jacob, when he realizes he's at the, the ladder of heaven, and he, he takes the stones that he used for his pillow, and he poured out his drink to Jehovah. That's the first drink offering in the Bible. Oh, wait a minute, I, I skipped something, didn't I? To go forth for our own mouth to burn incense on the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink. Oh, there's the Queen of Heaven again. There's the Roman Catholic Mary, B.C., before Christ was born. The church that says they're based upon the Jesus Christ and the Apostles and the Peter, the first Pope. There is no Jesus Christ, and there's no apostles in Jeremiah 44. But there's a queen of heaven. Shall I tell you what a pastor said? Oh, the people in the Old Testament are Christians. How can that be when Acts says they were first called Christians at Antioch? I don't care what the Bible says. They are Christians in the Old Testament. You know, the queen of heaven, when you run who she is, she is Elia's name as Esther. Aphrodite, Mary, and a bunch of other names. Didn't we read about the queen of heaven in Jerusalem earlier in Jeremiah? Well, they brought the queen of heaven to Egypt. As the Catholic Church has brought the queen of heaven worldwide. 
to pour out drink offerings, the hooch, that they say is a literal blood of Jesus Christ. Like I said, they burned incense in the Catholic Church. You don't want to smell that crap. I still got memories of that incense. As we have done. You know, we've done it before. We and our fathers, our kings and our princes in the city of Judah, we read about that in Jeremiah. That's why Judah, one of the reasons why Judah is gone and Jerusalem is gone. Jeremiah told you that. For then had we plenty of victuals, food, and we were well and saw no evil. So the prosperity of the land they didn't give to Jehovah God. They gave it to the Queen of Heaven. And the Bible says our God's a jealous God. And I heard another preacher say one time, well, you know, jealousy is a sin. I left that one alone. Because if you're going to say jealousy is a sin, and the Bible says our God is jealous, I don't even want to step in. Somebody says stuff like that, they are off my Facebook list. I don't even want to hear the nonsense. But since we left off to burn incense on the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offers on her, we have want of all things. And have been consumed by the sword and by famine. That's what God said he's doing. So the judgment of God has led them to, to veer away from the queen of heaven. But they're saying that she is angry and not God. Well how are you going to explain in a few time, I don't know how long. But you're all going to be dead. And you're offering up your incense, and you're offering up your drink offering, and you're all going to be dead, and you're not going back to the land. Because it's the wrong God. And when we burn incense under the Queen of Heaven, poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make wafers, I mean cakes, to worship her? That's the Roman Catholic Mass. Wafers to Mary in the name of Jesus across. But since Jesus is so wicked and cruel and all that, you can go through the back door through Mary. You do know in, in America that those wafers at the Mass are made by the nuns in a nunnery in California. You do know that, right? I like to get a box of those wafers because I would love to see the ingredients and see. You know, when you read the ingredients, the very first thing on that is the very first thing the majority of the listings. So I got over here a can of soda. And the very first ingredient is carbonated water, caramel coloring, aspartite, and I can't read the rest. Caffeine. So if I were to get me a package of Roman Catholic wafers, would I find in the ingredients Jesus Christ? No. And poured out drink offerings. No, not drink offerings, drink offerings, drink offerings. Unto her without our men. Drink offerings is a universal offering to God's. Then Jeremiah said unto the people, all the people, to the men and to the women. No, the men first. I guarantee it was the women that spoke up. Do you know who populates my jury the Baptist churches? They're women. You know who the my jury the gossips are in the, in the Baptist church? They're the women. And all and to all the people. Which given him that answer, saying, "All right, to the answer, we don't we don't care what you say. We don't care what God said. We're going to keep on going, and we're going back to to the worship of the Queen of Heaven." 
Jeremiah says, The incense that you burned in the cities of Judah, in the streets of Jerusalem. Remember Jeremiah told you that there was a church and an altar on every street? As there are in America? And your fathers, your kings, and your princes, and the people of the land, did not the Lord remember them? And came it not into his mind or thought? You know, the Lord's Supper is, is a remembrance of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and that he's coming again. And if you get involved in the mass and in the, in the foolishness of worshiping the Queen of Heaven and her cakes and her drinks, God will call your sins to remembrance. Because it's not under the blood of Jesus Christ. God doesn't remember any sins of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, but if it's not under the blood of the Lord, he'll be called back, he'll be remembered. So that the Lord could no longer bear, he had enough. One day God's going to have enough with America, as he had enough with England, as he had enough with Adolf Hitler, with just enough is enough is enough. Because of the evil of your doings, America, Christians, Haiti today just had a 7.0 earthquake. Haiti is given over to Satan, and as a nation, their proclamation, they give themselves over to Satan. Because of the abomination, the Queen of Heaven, the Mass, is an abomination. I wonder why the Pope don't want you to read the Bible. I don't know why they would burn Bible believers and those who try to put the Bible in the common language for the common people. I wonder why they try to kill them and did kill them. Therefore is your land desolate, Judah and Jerusalem, and astonishment and curse Without inhabitant, as at this day, right now. What happened to Jerusalem, what happened to uh, Judah, is because of what you are doing right now. Because you have burnt incense, and because you have sinned against the Lord, burning incense to gods, the Queen of Heaven, the little cakes to the Queen of Heaven are sinning against the Lord and abomination. Show that to your Catholic family who's never opened their Bible. And have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. That would give your Catholic family a heart attack nor walked in his law, nor in his statutes, nor his testimonies. Therefore this evil has happened unto you as at this day. Everything in Jerusalem and Judah is because you're evil because of your sins. You saw it, you lived it, you know it, there's no excuse for you now, and there's no repenting. That's in the law. Under the law, you could not sin knowing you were sinning. And bring that animal. Thank God we're under grace. Moreover, Jeremiah said unto all the people and to the women, Hear the word of the Lord, O Judah, that are in the land of Egypt. It's where they are right now. They should have left Jeremiah behind. But, Jeremiah is probably wondering too, why am I here? Because God has a message to these people. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, who, do, who are in Egypt right now. Ye and your wives, no wives, 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 wives. Ye 
have both spoken with your mouth. Jesus said in Matthew, every idle word shall a man give an account. And fulfill you with your hand. With what? They're burning incense and making little cakes. I'm sure God, the Queen of Heaven, is not Debbie. Because I love little Debbie. I don't know why I said that. We will surely perform our vows. We will do. I'm not saying little Debbie's is just my mind got into little Debbie's. We have vowed. Doesn't the law, did not Solomon say, it'd be better for you not to vow? And they're making vows to a goddess. To burn incense in the queen of heaven, that's a vow. And to pour out drink offerings onto her, that's a vow. Ye shall surely accomplish your vows and surely perform your vows. You're going to do for the goddess, for the false gods, what you won't do for God. You are more faithful to the falling gods and the false worship than you are for the service of God. And pastors of churches today, they relish that moment. Well, there's only two times a year that people come to church. Esther, a queen of heaven, and Tammuz. Where many churches have candlelight service. Including the Baptists. You are more faithful to Esther and Tammuz than you are to Jesus Christ. That's what Jeremiah said. To the people of Judah, and you can bring what's going on today. Therefore, hear ye the word of the Lord, which you're not going to listen. <laughs> That's ironic. Hear the word of the Lord, but I know you're not going to listen. All Judah that dwell in the land of Egypt. Behold, I have sworn my great name. That's not Jeremiah speaking. Saith the Lord. That my name shall no more be named in the mouth of any of Judah. In all the land of Egypt. Saying the Lord God liveth. God says until you die. You're not ever going to mention my name. You're not going to say the Lord God liveth. I will not allow you. You say, well, how do you know that's going on today, Stiley? Because I read church signboards. Yeah. I see more church signboards with the name of the great church with the name of the great pastor and so few church boards do I see the name of Jesus Christ. Read them. They got their little jokes. They got all our welcome. Good Friday service. The great, wonderful Baptist church. Our great pastor. And how, how often do they name the name of Jesus Christ? And yet are involved in the nonsense we've been reading. That in their services of the year, they have Esther, the Queen of Heaven. And you know what God says? You're not going to mention my name. Well, you know, in the message they mention Jesus. Yeah, but Paul tells us there's another Jesus. There's another gospel. There is another spirit. And that may be in your church. Where 2 Corinthians 11 says that minister, that preacher, that whoever. 
may be a spokesman, not of God, but of the devil himself. And you're going to tell me if you got the devil behind your podium, your pastor, your uh, pulpit, you think to tell me that Satan is going to, in the name of reality, in the real name of Jesus Christ, be mentioned? I doubt it. Behold, I will watch over them for evil. And not for good. Yeah, you're in trouble. And all the men of Judah that are in the land of Egypt shall be consumed by sword and by famine until they be in end of death. Now, Jeremiah doesn't happen. Jeremiah has not been brought there by his own will. Jeremiah is a prophet of the Lord and will be spared. Everybody else said Baruch, they're not coming out alive. He had a small number that escaped the sword, shall return out of the land of Egypt unto the land of Judah. Jeremiah, Baruch, and all the remnant of Judah that are going into the land of Egypt to sojourn there, shall know whose word shall stand. Mine or theirs. All right, so the small raiment that does come out, Jeremiah, Baruch, and the small others, when they look back at Egypt and they see the dead bodies, it's like when Elijah had the battle with the prophets of Baal. And after the fire came down and, and licked up the sacrifice and the waters and the rock, and they proclaimed, God, he is the Lord, something. God, he is the Lord. I forget how they, how they said that. That's what's going to happen here. They're going to look back and say, well, that's what the Queen of Heaven did. And yet when Ezra and Nehemiah come, they're, they, they still sin. And this shall be a sign unto you, Jews require a sign, saith the Lord, that I will punish you in this place, Egypt. Ye may know that my word shall surely stand against you for evil. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give Pharaoh Hophra, king of Egypt, into the hand of his enemies because of the, the Jews. And into the hand of all them that seek his life. Well, he's been sinning too. As I gave Zedekiah, king of Judah, into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. His enemy. That sought his life. So everything that's going to happen now in Egypt is a replay of what happened in Judah. Don't you repent because God's not going to take it. 